from what we've seen at the UN, you know, the statement that the US has overwhelming leverage over China is really not backed up by what we have seen in the Security Council. And beyond, actually, we see quite the opposite, that the US keeps uh, pushing and asking for things and ends up with results that are far, far beyond what they asked for. How do you, how do you explain that discrepancy or how, how is it that especially this president, this administration who has used this rhetoric before the elections, after the elections vis-a-vis -vis China, does not use the leverage that he say it has? What's the explanation for that? That's a great question, and that goes to the core of the problem of American diplomacy, because I believe that American presidents have not used all the elements of national power to protect the American people, and I think history is going to judge some American presidents pr pretty poorly for that. You've got to remember that there's a corresponding period. That was the 1970s, when the United States was in that state of, um, as Jimmy Carter said it, um, malaise. And everyone was saying um, that we had to live with the Soviet Union. It was a given that we had to have detente. That was the thought of Richard Nixon and his Secretary of State and National Security Advisor, Henry Kissinger. That was what Americans assumed, that there was nothing we could do about it. So what happened? You have a president called Ronald Reagan who says, no, 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 the Soviet Union is not a given. And what he does is he goes about undermining the Soviet Union and as we all know, that a uh, year after he left office, Soviet Union falls apart. So, yeah, the, the United States does not want to use its power. I understand that. And indeed, many people in this town and in Washington think we don't have that power. But you start to look at the underlying factors and it becomes inescapable that we have much more power than we think. The one thing we don't have is we don't have political will. But I understand the way you look at the United States, the way it interacts in the UN, yeah, we think we're weak. But in fact, we are not. And as I said, I think history is going to judge some American presidents very poorly, not only with regard to North Korea, but with other uh, issues as well, for not using those elements of American power because of their perceptions. The other thing is, and, and this is a little bit, um, a little bit different, in the sense that since Nixon, um, it has been a primary objective of American foreign policy to integrate China into the international system. And because that was our objective, we tolerated a lot of behavior that we would not have tolerated from other nations. Uh, and so the Chinese took advantage of that, and the Chinese made themselves look pretty powerful. Um, President Trump, however, has said, oh no, integrating the Chinese into the international system, that's not on my to-do list. His to-do list is to disarm North Korea. Now, we can all disagree with what President Trump says, the insults that he hurls to North Korea, all the rest of it. But the one thing that he does get, should get credit for is that he has said, I'm going to protect Americans from North Korea. I'm going to make it the primary objective of my foreign policy. And indeed, if you, you know, a lot of people say, well, Trump's attitudes towards China is inconsistent. No, it actually isn't. For decades, Americans have had a China policy. Trump, in reality, doesn't have a China policy. He has policies that affect China, but they're not China policies. He has a North Korea policy. And when he thinks that China is helping on North Korea, he's been very easy on the Chinese. But you go and look at that June 20 tweet where he expresses disappointment in Xi Jinping, you see the change in American policy um, with regard to China. And that's because he decided that Xi Jinping was foot dragging. So this is a very different president, a very different foreign policy. He's thrown out a lot of the accepted truths. And we can say it's a good thing or a bad thing. But the point is, there's a new sheriff in town.